ITP 262, task 6, assignment number 5, skeleton and bones. If you've ever seen a real skeleton or a fossil in a museum, you might think that all bones are dead. Although bones in museums are dry, hard, or crumbly, the bones in your body are different. The bones that make up your skeleton are all very much alive, growing and changing all the time like other parts of your body. A fully developed bone is made up of mineral salt, water, and tissue. There are two types of bone, compact and cancellate. A compact bone is smooth, solid, and is also known as a dense bone. This forms the outside of the bones, while the cancellate bone is a much lighter structure. All bones are a combination of cancellate and compact bone. The bones of the skeletal system are made up of several different types of tissue. Spongy bone is located within the dense bone and is just like a sponge. It contains many holes and crevices. Throughout the bones is calcium, which gives them strength and collagen that makes them flexible. Located deep inside the bones is another type of tissue that is known as marrow, responsible for the production of red blood cells. The human skeleton of a healthy adult is made up of 206 bones. But it is interesting to note that when we are born, we actually have 300 bones. How can we account for those 94 missing bones? By understanding that as we grow throughout our lives, certain bones fuse together to become one. Along with tendons, cartilage, and ligaments, the bones in our body form an intricate framework that supports, protects, and allows us to be mobile. The human skeleton can be broken down into how many parts? No, not 206. The human skeleton can be broken down into two parts, the axial skeleton and the appendicle skeleton. The axial skeleton is responsible for providing the supports that are needed to hold up the head, neck, and trunk of the body. This section of the skeletal system consists of the skull, vertebral, column, sternum, and each of the ribs. The appendicular skeleton anchors the upper body and lower extremities, shoulders, and pelvis to the axial skeleton via the body's tendons and ligaments. And that's all that we have time for today, so we will pick this up tomorrow.